Good afternoon, Chair Solomon and members of the committee. My name is Montana Williams, and I am the Director of State and Local Public Policy for the Chamber of Progress. We're a tech industry coalition promoting technology's progressive future. Our organization works to ensure that all Americans do benefit from technological leaps. Our partner corporations do include Amazon, Google, and Meta, formerly known as Facebook, but our partner, but our partner companies don't have a vote or veto over our positions. We truly do appreciate your commitment to combat organized crime, but we do urge your committee to please oppose H7013. This bill has already been rejected in 15 state legislatures, will hurt small online sellers, and is unnecessary now that big box retailers and online marketplaces have endorsed a new compromise version of this bill at the federal level. The biggest thing that I do wanna to touch on um, is that 15 states have actually rejected bills similar to this one. Um, prioritizing the needs of online entrepreneurs and consumer choice. I know that earlier it was said that California, for example, has passed legislation like this. It, in fact, has not. It's currently sitting um, in the assembly. It was just introduced. Montana, can you just clarify? You said 15 states have rejected have reje it? Have rejected. So by rejected, do you mean that they voted against the bill? Or yes. Or they just... They, they voted they voted against they the voted bill. the bill down they voted the bill down yes the only place that it's actually been enacted like the um, speaker pro tem did say is arkansas but states like california washington maryland virginia these bills have not been passed they're nowhere close to being enacted at this they're, time they're, so they're not passed or they're, they were voted down the, the ones i just listed have not have not passed the one in california previously was voted down they reintroduced another one i believe it, sb 301 okay is what so they 15 introduced. states did not vote it down it's 15 just, states have re rejected they they rejected but they it. did not vote it down i can provide you the information that i have after this i'd love to follow up with you and i can email that to you okay. if that would be helpful but our our research does show that 15 states have rejected this bill and Yes, 15 states have rejected this bill, and the bills that were spoken to have, you know, passed committee, but they haven't passed all the way through legislation to get to the point that it's on the governor's desk. Legislators in Republican and Democratic-led states agree this legislation would add additional obstacles um, that would ultimately hurt small sellers, decrease opportunity, increase red tape, and hinder consumers in search of a deal. As I said, the only state to pass legislation is Walmart's home state, Arkansas. A federal compromise version of this bill has already been endorsed by both retailers and leading online marketplaces, making this legislation unnecessary. In October, U.S. House members did introduce the Federal Inform Act to combat the online sale of stolen, counterfeit, and dangerous consumer products. This legislation is supported by retail groups, um, coalitions, including Etsy and eBay, which are the small market sellers, uh, online market sellers, and Amazon as well. Online marketplaces are largely borderless and, have in a, and don't observe state-by-state -state boundaries. Since H. 7013 greatly differs from the federal version, passing this bill would exacerbate a patchwork of state laws on an issue that would be more properly addressed at the federal level. Um, for example, um, the aggregate total revenue to qualify as a high-volume seller is 5,000 in this bill, and the federal bill is 20,000. Um, another big difference is that this bill has a 24-hour um, turnaround period um, for the small sellers to report and verify to the online marketplaces, whereas the federal bill allows 10 days, giving them a little more time and leniency to get all the information that these small sellers need to get together and provide the online market sellers before they're disclosed. There are many other ways to address this issue. Um, for example, for example, um, like I said earlier, California did not pass the bill. Um, instead, um, Governor Newsom recently released a plan to help local police fight organized crime, including $255 million in grants for local police departments, $48 million to bulk up pr um, prosecution of retail theft, and $20 million in grants to help small businesses. These are, state these are steps that other states can take as well. Another thing that can be done is gathering more information about organized retail theft. Last year, several states, including Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, and Texas, did reject the informed bills, the state informed bills, but instead initiated studies to better understand the problem to figure out how to actually address the crime that was happening in their states. And again, finally, states can encourage Congress to pass the modified compromise version of the Informed Consumers Act that was brought forward and that's been spoken about previously. 
We hope you will heed the perspectives of the legislators who have assessed the consequences of passing state versions of the INFORM Act and oppose H. 7013. This bill would take sides for Walmart against Amazon, would hurt small online business owners, and has been rejected in all but one state legislature. We encourage the Rhode Island legislature to instead support the improved federal compromise version of this, um, of this legislation that does have broader support and to also consider the other options that I've provided in this testimony. Um, thank you so much for your time and I look forward to answering any questions you may have. Thank you for your testimony, Whip Chippendale. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Montana. <clears throat> I'm just going to uh, kind of go back and touch on something that was uh, mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, the first section, uh, or the first page of the bill, sorry, where we define our legal definition of high volume third party seller is, um, is defined. Is it your interpretation that a person also in, I'm sorry, also in context of the definition of consumer product, which means any tangible personal property which is distributed to commerce, not normally, uh, which is normally used for personal, family, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this, would not, this would not impact the hobbyist who is perhaps creating, I don't know, birdhouse, making birdhouses. This is only if they got the birdhouses from someone else who made them, correct? I'm sorry, what, what was yeah, your question? That the, was not articulated very well. That was all my no, fault. No problem. Um, <laughs> so because we're only talking about a, a third party, which means it was created by one entity and then sold by a different entity to that third party, that entity in the middle is the one we're looking at. So this, and I just, I don't know why I chose birdhouses, but <laughs> if, if someone buys birdhouse or steals birdhouses off the back of a truck mm -hmm. and attempts to sell them, clearly they're in violation of this section because, well, not only do they steal, but they're trying to sell them. That would apply. But the hobbyist who may have you know, made the birdhouses in their basement and meets the criteria of 200 units and $5,000 in sale a year. Uh, is your interpretation that this would apply to them also or no? Yes. It would. It, it would. This bill would affect them as well. Okay. Thank you. Representative Potter. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for your testimony. Can you just spend a, a quick minute and elaborate on uh, when you said this would hurt small businesses? Can you speak exactly to what you mean by that? Yeah, of course. So this bill, as it's written currently, would create additional obstacles that small sellers may not be able to, to handle. Like I said earlier, um, this bill does differ from the federal bill, which allows a little more leniency for the small sellers. For example, when you're defining these small sellers, um, in the federal bill, you have to have an aggregate total of $20,000 of revenue, whereas this one is $5,000. So it can definitely you know, affect the, the, the um, small online seller that is selling the birdhouses legitimately. Um, it can affect people who are you know, creating and selling their own mass supplies, which are in high demand right now. You know, these are thresholds that can be easily met by small online business sellers. And with the... Um, reporting and disclosure process, it only allows a 24-hour um, turnaround for, to provide the you know, tax identification, bank account information, all of this stuff. And sometimes you know, when people are you know, making sales and, and doing all these product and things like that, 24 hours goes like that. So these people would immediately be suspended and no longer be able to, for example, sell their, sell their product just because they may have missed the 24-hour mark. Whereas in the federal bill, you have 10 days. That gives them a lot more time to comply with the rules. No one's trying to hide the ball or, you know, it, encourage any kind of, you know, organized crime, whether it's, you know, in person or online. It's just creating that amount of leniency so that these small business sellers won't get lost in these quick turnaround times and get caught unintentionally by this bill. Thank you. And I'm going to assume that the majority of online sales are interstate, right? It's usually not people who are selling in buying within a state confines. You, so, oh, you said interstate or intrastate? Interstate. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is it fair to assume that this would disproportionately hurt small businesses in Rhode Island, especially versus other states that don't have the regulation in place? 
Um, I, I think I think it could. I, I definitely think um, this bill specifically can hurt Rhode Island small small sellers. You know, a lot of people in, in each state support local businesses. And so, again, this is a threshold that can be easily hit by anyone in the state, by people who are purchasing within within the state as well. And when you're talking about interstate commerce, which is something I, I, I touched on in the testimony, um, each state right now, as you all know, is um, producing different bills like this, but each one has its own intricacies, each one has its own differences and things like that. There's no set, or, there's no set standard across, across state lines, which makes it really hard for you know, a Rhode Island seller to sell to someone in Wisconsin, for example. Not only do they have to abide by, by these rules, they also have to abide by Wisconsin, and, because the, the, the purchaser may be in, um, in Wisconsin. And so having to follow all of these different laws in all of these different states makes it very, very tough for local sellers to, to thrive. And a lot of people do rely on these, um, on, on their businesses for supplemental income and things like that. And the last thing we want to do is take away opportunities because there's so many different legislations to have to follow. Thank you. Are there any other questions for the witness? Hearing none. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Speaker Pro Tim County, actually, I have a quick question for you. Yes. Uh, do any of the other states have a different threshold of the 5,200 transaction? Not that I'm aware of. And uh, I think uh, as a clarification on that color map that was uh, given out to the committee members on in the committee documents, uh, the word legislation passed means bills that have either passed the first or the second legislative chamber. So in some cases, they may have passed both legislative chambers, but the bill has not yet been signed into law. So I wanted to correct that, but also wanted to bring to your attention, since she had mentioned that Georgia had chosen not to do anything, and Georgia actually just passed uh, State Bill 332 by a 51 to nothing vote. Um, Florida Judiciary Committee just passed its informed bill by a 20 to nothing vote. And the New Hampshire Senate Commerce Committee is expected to vote on this bill next Tuesday and is expected to move it on a five to nothing vote. So I would point out that there are states that are trying to take action because they see there are problems that are taking place within the marketplace. We can always adjust the dollar value if necessary, if, if there's a concern about that person who sells birdhouses. We want to make sure that our friend Whip Chippendale, if he's going to go out and chop down the trees to make those birdhouses, we want him to be able to sell those. Other uh, oh, Representative I, Potter. Oh, I was going to say, I, did, did you want me to address any? Did you have a question for me? or? No. Okay. Okay. Representative Potter. The federal legislation that you referenced that raised that number up to 20,000 annually? Yes, 20,000. Mm -hmm. Is... Uh, are there any other major differences other than that threshold amount? It's the the twenty thousand and the twenty four hour um, time period, and then there was also um, it was something with the disclosure that greatly um, differs. I can go back in and compare the two again. It's slipping my mind right now, but I'd be more than happy to do a bill breakdown for you to show you the the major differences that are between the um, HR fifty five hundred two, which is the federal bill, and, and this one as well. And the interests that you're representing are supporting that federal legislation at this point? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. If you could just do that, send that to the committee too, Absolutely. those thresholds to at some point. You can email it to the clerk and I'll get it to all of us. Absolutely. Are there any additional questions? Chairman Phillips. Thank you, Chairman. I'm, I, over and over in my mind again, I'm, I'm still trying to comprehend your definition of the word reject. You have said 15 states had rejected it. Can you give us a, def a definition of your meaning of, um, of rejection? Is it like uh, Pro Speaker Pro Tem Kennedy said that one chamber has passed and the other one hasn't yet? Is that considered a rejection or what? Yes, that can be considered re a rejection. It can be, it, it was introduced and it just wasn't voted out of committee. It was either held or, or so just, it just really ended. isn't a rejection. It's just that they feel that, like we do, we hold bills for further study so we can get mm -hmm. further input and maybe have to modify, do a sub A or a sub A2 to try and get it, tighten it up or make it a better bill. Okay. So it's not a total rejection on these 15 states. It's just that they haven't 
fully enacted or fully voted on it. Okay. I also understand that some states don't want to continue down that road as well. well and, and that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. I was just, I was just, you know, um, re replying to something that was said and just pointing out that the information that we do have is different. And yes, Georgia SB 332 did pass through a chamber, but again, it has not gotten to the point where it's passed both chambers and it's getting to the desk of the governor for signing. Thank you, Chairman. All right. Thank. Uh, Speaker Pro Tem Kennedy. Uh, Chairman, I would just add one more thing. In many cases, the pieces of legislation that were introduced, in many cases, just like we, as a legislative body, had our hands full last legislative session on something called a pandemic, many pieces of legislation never made it across the finish line. I wouldn't base too much or put too much stock in the 2021 session since so many of the pieces of legislation are being now introduced for the 2022 sessions. And so I think that will probably be a much better uh, milestone to look at at the conclusion of 2022 to see how many states actually move forward with enactment of something like this because of the fact that we're hopefully, uh, as Dr. McDonald said earlier today, getting closer to landing the plane. Thank you. All right, so we have 